There's a reason why people like Ben Mala were able to go from zero dollars in net worth to two hundred million dollars in net worth by investing in real estate. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I don't like stocks. I still invest in stocks. I just think that real estate is better when it comes to building your net worth. And real estate does have cons. I'm totally aware of that. It's less passive. It's less liquid, and it takes more capital to get started. So why do I still like real estate? Well, let's take a look at a real life example so we can get a better understanding. I invested $1,800 in the stocks, which turned into $3,000. That's a pretty good ROI, which is a 60% return on my money. Now I invested $30,000 into real estate, which turned into $61,000, which is 100% ROI. So let me show you really quick how I got that $61,000 in real estate. I put $30,000 down. This also includes my closing costs and some money for fixing up the property. The property that I bought was worth $340 after I fixed it up, but I didn't pay $340 for it. I bought it for $277. So that means I had a loan of $269 on it. And I had to actually end up borrowing an extra $10,000 in order to finish fixing up this property. So that left me with $61,000, which is a 100% return on my money. Now you might be thinking, well, I mean, how are you going to compare those two? You invested $1,800 in one and you invested thirty dollars in the other. You just can't compare those kind of numbers. So let's say I invested thirty dollars into both of them with the same ROIs. Well, stocks, remember, had the 60% return. And I put 30K into that, that's gonna come out to 48K. Real estate had the 100% ROI. Again, I'll put 30K in there, and that's gonna come out to 60K. I'm rounding down, I know the actual number was 61. But now you might be thinking, well, Claude, maybe you just suck at investing in stocks. If I invested in stocks, I would have got a 100% return on my money. So let's actually flip these numbers, right? Let's say stocks got a 100% return and real estate only got a 60% return. So let's also flip these here. This is going to be 60K and real estate is only going to be a 48K to my net worth. Are stocks now better? So are stocks a better option if you're just better at investing in stocks? No, I still prefer real estate even in this scenario. And here's why. Let's, let's take a look at one year what my net worth is. So in the first scenario, stocks appreciate on average 8 to 12% a year. So let's say that my 60K appreciates 10% over the next year. That's $6,000. So now my total net worth, N for net worth, is going to be $66,000 by investing in stocks. Now let's take real estate, right? And we're going with the lower ROI here. Real estate on average appreciates 3 to 5% a year. So let's say that my house, right, which I bought, which was worth $340,000 after it was fixed up, appreciated at 4%. That means I'm going to add $13,600 for the value of my house going up at 4% to the 48K. But we're still not done there because I have principal pay down, right, with each mortgage payment, which adds another $5,000 to my net worth, totaling $66,600 ,006 in net worth after one year. So really, I mean, the $600 is, is marginal. It doesn't really make a difference. It's basically about the same. But the whole point of this example is to show you that real estate has so many forms of how you, your net worth goes up. And this keeps building every year, right? Because 4% of that gets even higher. Your principal pay down gets even bigger every year. Next year, that might be $7,000 instead of five. But this still isn't the main reason why I think real estate is a better investment for building your net worth. All right, so let's check out 
another scenario and why I think real estate's better. In order to really grow and build your net worth, and this is what Ben Mala does, you have to leverage your investments. You have to leverage your money. This is what Ben Mala is always talking about in his videos. Go to the bank, get the bank's money. Once you got the bank's money, refinance, get more money, Re reuse the, the leverage, the equity that you have in your investments in order to keep growing. And that's how Ben Mala was able to grow so fast. Now you might be thinking, well, Claude, you can leverage your stocks. I mean, it's the same thing. True, you can leverage by getting a margin loan in stocks. This is part of the reasons why I don't like stocks though. Margin loans can be a little bit more risky. So let's look at an example. Let's say you put $30,000, and this is just gonna be a rough general example. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect. So you put $30,000 into stocks using a margin loan, right? Let's say this is based off of margin. And the stock market falls. And now your portfolio is worth $15,000. But you're a smart stock investor. You know, hey, hang in there. And it's going to come back up and, and you'll end up making more than $30,000. You'll have 60 k Well, the thing is, when you borrow on margin, the people who lent you the money are going to say, hey, you either have to add more money to this or we're going to sell that 15 k so we can make ourselves whole. And unless you're the average Joe, or sorry, unless you're, the, unless you're making six figures a year or you're making millions a year, you might not have another 15K laying around to help make it whole. So you're gonna end up losing that money. And that's why I don't like investing in stocks with margin. It's just too risky. Real estate has much safer forms of leverage, right? You have the option to refinance or get a home equity line of credit. So, a refinance is basically getting a new loan, treating out your old, your old loan, and then taking out the equity that you had in the property as a form of cash, and you can use that money to then go buy more properties. So the reason why leverage, right, is so important, whether you're gonna leverage through stocks or real estate, is because it's gonna help you grow faster and bigger. If you're thinking that you're gonna become wealthy by saving up $30,000 every single time to invest, it's gonna take you forever. You're gonna be 80 years old by the time you're actually wealthy. And I don't think that's why most of us are watching this video to figure out how can I get wealthy by 80, right? And so the only other option would be to make a lot of money and most of us, we're not making millions a year to where we can invest $30,000 every single year. So the only other option for the average Joe like me and most other people is to invest by using leverage. So let's take a look at what now a HELOC is like. A HELOC is basically like a credit card based on the equity in your property. So if I have, let's say, $50,000 of equity in my property, the bank will give me a credit card of up to 90% of that equity. So I'll get a credit card for, let's say, $40,000. And it works just like a credit card. I can spend it on what I want. If I don't use that money, I'm not paying any interest on it, only that the interest rates are much lower than a credit card. And this is what a lot of real estate investors use to grow. Like Ben Mala uses a lot of refinances on his commercial properties to buy more. Now, if you're saving to buy real estate, that's when I like to put my money in stocks. So that way it's growing me, right? Over the two year time horizon, it might be going up and down, but overall it's gonna come up on top. And that, that's when I like to use stocks and that's, that's how I include them in my portfolio. But let's say you already own a home and you're like, oh, okay, I, I see the importance of leverage now. How can I tap into that leverage? Should I refinance or should I get a home equity line of credit? I would recommend getting a home equity line of credit right now because Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac just posted a new COVID tax on the real estate market, which includes an extra 0.5% fee when you refinance on the new loan. So essentially it just makes refinancing more expensive. And that's why I go with the home equity line of credit option. If you guys liked the video, learned anything new, please share it, subscribe, let me know down below what else you'd like to see, and uh, I can post more in-depth topics or other things around refinancing, home equity lines of credit, or how to use leverage safely. So thanks again.